pregnancy and infant loss is usually a unique type of grief. It often causes confusion, self-pity, and regret, especially when the pregnancy is invisible to everybody else, as not everyone is actually aware that you are carrying a pregnancy. October is a Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. In this series, we'll be exploring the why of pregnancy and infant loss to answer the many unanswered or misunderstood situations of bleeding in pregnancy, sudden cramping, or the ultrasound showing no baby indicating a forced pregnancy, or the baby not making it to term. So this is Molecular Biology and Biotechnology with Lucy, and today we'll be talking about biology of pregnancy loss. It can be classified into two, early pregnancy loss, also called miscarriage, late pregnancy loss, called stillbirth. Miscarriages are expulsion of a fetus before 20 weeks, and it can be spontaneous, that it happens on its own, or it can be induced with medical or mechanical means. The incidence is around 15 to 20% considering losses that occur before they can clinically be recognized. The types of miscarriage include a threatened miscarriage, and here is a situation where the baby is growing all right, but there is vaginal bleeding that is happening. Some There could be some cramping and some little pain, and this with medical intervention and bed rest can actually go on to full term. Inevitable miscarriage is when now bleeding has begun, then there is more pain, there is more cramping, and the products of conception get expelled out of the uterus. Once they start getting uh, expelled, we can have what we call a complete miscarriage, where now the ultrasound of the uterus will show an empty uterus, meaning all products of conception have been expelled. Then when we have incomplete miscarriage, it now refers to the fact that not all products of conception have been expelled, meaning we need to have more intervention to eliminate the products of conception. We have what we call a missed miscarriage. Here, the baby is not growing, the heartbeat is not there, but then there isn't cramping, there isn't bleeding, and there isn't any other symptom that the parent is experiencing. And here we will have to have an intervention to expel the product of conception because it cannot grow uh, anymore into a pregnancy. We have what you call a septic miscarriage, and this is where we have an infection after a miscarriage. And this can be as a result of an incomplete miscarriage that has occurred, leaving some products in the uterus, or when the uh, abortion has been done wrongly without the use of correct medical procedure. We have what we call recurrent miscarriages, and here is when you have three or more situations or occurrences of a miscarriage. So what is the biology of miscarriages? Most of the causes are fetal causes, which account for 80 to 90% of miscarriages, especially in the first trimester, and they are characterized by an abnormal conceptus. It can be due to genetic abnormalities or structural abnormalities. So chromosomal abnormalities is when now you are either missing a chromosome or you have an extra chromosome or the chromosome has an irregular portion. Kindly refer to our lesson on chromosomes to understand chromosomes better. So these ones usually account for 50 to 70 percent of all spontaneous miscarriages in the first trimester and 20 percent in the second trimester. And you can realize that chromosome abnormalities really are, are out of our reach. It's something you cannot control and therefore usually most miscarriages are uncontrollable they just happen so we have what we call numerical chromosomal and abnormalities and euploidy and here we have what we call a missing pair or monosomy such that usually chromosomes are in pairs so if we have one that doesn't have its pair that is monosomy like in a, a condition called turner syndrome we have 45 chromosomes 
or we can have a situation where now instead of the normal two we have three or four or five and so on and so forth for example we have trisomy 21 also called down syndrome it's one of the most common abnormalities and here is a child who's been born with down syndrome so sometimes it will reach to term other times the body will recognize it earlier on we also have now what we call trisomy 13 this means that at chromosome 13 we have three chromosomes instead of two leads to cleft lip leads to a child with no eyebrows with some malformed ears clenched hands and abnormal testes we also have uh, trisomy affecting the sex chromosomes for example in Klinefelter syndrome where we have a male who has two X's and a Y chromosome instead of one so here it's supposed to be just XY but then we have an additional X chromosome so we have structural chromosome abnormalities and for example we can have the portion of a chromosome deleted so if this is our chromosome here, we can have this portion here that has been indicated, deleted, forming even a shorter chromosome, like in these two syndromes. We have like Jacobson syndrome, we have the terminal chromosome 11, long arm deleted. We have what we call duplications, that is a multiplication of a portion of chromosome. So for example, this part has been multiplied for making it even longer for example in this disease called charcot marie tooth disease type 1a we have this gene on chromosome 17 being multiplicated we have what you call translocation where you transfer one portion into another portion and there are two forms reciprocal translocation where segments from two different chromosomes are interchanged and you can see the interchange of this part and this part here into these now two new different chromosomes we also have what we call robertsonian translocation where now an entire portion of a chromosome is joined to another one so these are two chromosomes they join at the centromere to form a totally new chromosome then we have inversions where a portion is going to break turn upside down and be reinverted so if it breaks around the centromere like here and inverted we will have this result if it breaks around the telomeres towards the edges it will have that inversion we have also insertions so one part will break from one chromosome and inserted into another so this part here breaks and it is inserted to this chromosome to result into two so one will be shorter another one will be added then we have chromosome forming rings so it will turn and form into a circle this way of course now this is an abnormal chromosome because chromosomes are not supposed to be in ring form and then we have isochromosome and this is usually a mirror image copy including the centromere and all these are abnormal forms of chromosome that can actually occur in a fetus. Then we usually have what we call structural fetal abnormalities. Uh, one of the main ones is called neurotube defects that, that will have affect the brain and the spine of the fetus as it is developing. And here we have some of them. I think the most common here is the spina bifida, an open and a closed one. So here, this is the development of the spine, and this side is going to form the braid, this is going to form uh, the tail towards the pelvis. So if we have an abnormality around the cranial neuropole, then we will have anceph ancephaly, anencephaly, then we can also have it happening in the midsection. Here, we can also have it happening now towards the the caudal tail there or and it can also be open open spina bifida so these are neurotube defects that occur when there is an abnormality when the brain and the spine of the fetus are forming we also have what we call 
teratogenic or mutagenic factors that cause anatomical abnormalities like no limbs or something is missing or extra limbs and these are teratogens or agents that cause abnormalities like the way it did for the lidomide that was used to cure morning sickness in pregnant women and then it caused abnormalities of lack of limbs then we have mutagenic factors that can cause mutations and then result to an anatomical abnormality so coming up in this series we'll be talking about maternal factors as a cause of miscarriages see you in our next series